The Seal Book. Once again, the keeper of the book has opened the ponderous door to the secret vault, wherein is kept the great sealed book, in which is recorded all the secrets and mysteries of mankind through the ages. Here are tales of every kind, tales of murder, of madness, of dark deeds, strange and terrible beyond all belief. Keeper of the book, I would know what tale we tell this time. Open the great book and let us read. Slowly, the great book opens. One by one, the keeper of the book turns the pages and stops. Ah, the strange story of a man who hated his wife because she loved him too much with a love that even death could not extinguish. A tale called, Till Death Do Us Part. Here is the tale till death do us part, as it is written in the sealed book. The story begins in the pleasant suburban home of Chris and Blanche Worby. It is late at night, and the moonlight shining through the window shows Chris Worby tossing and turning in his sleep, suffering from a nightmare, a nightmare about his wife. Blanche, I don't need it. Oh, all right, very well. Your wife is on the phone, Mr. Worthy. Blanche, this is the fifth time you've called me this morning. Chris, your wife is waiting in your office for you. Darling, it looks like rain. I brought your raincoat. Blanche, you know there isn't a cloud in the sky. You've got to stop this coming to the office all the time. Your wife is on the phone, Mr. Worthy. Uh, Blanche is waiting in your office for you, Chris. Darling, I've come to drive you home. Mrs. Uh, Worthy is on the phone, sir. Chris, is there waiting something I can do? Your wife is waiting Chris, on the phone. Darling. Oh, no. No, no. Why won't you leave me alone for a while? Leave me alone. Chris. Chris, darling, wake up. You're having uh, another nightmare. What? Oh, Blanche. Oh, you were having a nightmare, uh, dear. I awakened you. Oh, yes, yes. I remember now. It was all so real. Can I get you something, darling? No, it isn't necessary. Perhaps a glass of warm milk might help. Please, Blanche, I don't want anything. Well, now, don't you think you'd better see a doctor, dear? <sighs> You've been having these nightmares for several weeks now. A doctor can't help me. Blanche, we can't go on this way. Can't go on what way? What do you mean? I've never been able to tell you, but I will now. I can't stand living with you. Can't stand living with me. But, Chris, I love you. Yes, I know, I know you love me, but it's an inhuman love. Your love is so overwhelming, it's smothering me at every step. I must have a divorce. No, Chris. I'll never give you a divorce. For two years I fought to get you, did everything to prevent your marriage to Anne Ballon. I have you now, and I'm going to keep you. Even knowing how I feel about you? Yes. My love for you, Chris, is greater than my pride. Oh, please, darling, let's not say any more. 
You'll feel better in the morning. I'll never feel better. Not while we're together. Blanche, when I get dressed, I'm going to move to a hotel. I'm leaving you. Darling, you're being ridiculous. Please go back to bed. No. I can't live with you and I won't. I'm leaving you for good. Oh, Chris, you're funny. Oh, darling. Your wife is outside, Chris, waiting to see you. Oh, no, not again. I'm afraid so, Chris. I can't go on this way. Day after day, she phones every hour, comes down here to see me. Well, now, perhaps you had better see her, Chris. Maybe you can reach an amicable agreement with No, her. not with Blanche. Martin, there's only one way out for me. I must leave town, disappear. Leave town? What's your business? That doesn't matter now. Nothing matters but to be free. I'm leaving the running of the business in your hands. Yes, but where are you going? I haven't decided yet. All I know is it's going to be someplace far away. Some place where even Blanche can't find me. Come in, Chris. Hello, Tuffy. Glad you remember me. I sure do. You were the best tackle Yale ever had outside of myself. <laughs> well, what are you doing in Texas? Looking for a job? Looking for a job? Are you kidding? What about that flourishing business you've got back in New York? I've left it and everything else behind. My name is Richard Keller now. Chris, you haven't gotten into a jam. I mean, the law isn't after you, is it? No, Tuffy, the law isn't after me. It's a personal matter. Oh. Well, sit down. Tell me about it. Tuffy, I'd rather not talk about it. No, not just now. Sure, Chris, I understand. Well, can you give me a job? As Richard Keller? Can I give you a job? Why, this company's dying on its feet for men like you. You're hired. Oh, this is room 313. Will you send up a waiter, please? Oh, and the morning paper. Thank you. service. Come in. Hello, darling. Blanche. Yes, darling. How are you? I changed my name. I traveled all over the West before coming here. Never told anyone where I was. How did you find me? Oh, I love you, Chris. No matter where you went or how far it was, I'd find you. What do you want? Oh, I want you to come home. No. Never. I'm not coming back, and that's final. But, Chris, I'm your wife, and I love you. Oh, just give me another chance, darling. I'll do whatever you want me to if you'll only come home. No, it'll just be the same thing all over again. No, it won't, dear. I'll change. Really, I will. Do you remember you're objecting to my calling you every hour at the office? Well, I promise I won't anymore. You mean that? Yes, Chris, I do. Won't you please come home? All right, all right. We'll have another try at it. But this is the last time. Oh, Chris, you'll never regret it. Gentlemen, this is to inform you that your order, the 25th, was shipped... No, I... I'll answer it, Miss Nelson. Hello? Hello, darling. How are you? Blanche! Oh, just a minute. That'll be all, Miss Nelson. We'll finish the letter later. Yes, Mr. Worthy. Blanche, this is the fourth time you've called this morning. The one thing you promised you wouldn't do. But I only wanted to know if you wanted me to drive in and pick you up. Oh, I'm sorry, dear, if I've upset you. You say that every time you call. I see now that I'll never be rid of the sound of your voice till death parts us. Death. Please, darling, say you aren't angry with me. You know I love you. Chris. Chris. Till death do us part. She would have died. I'd be free. Free. I could answer the phone. I know it wasn't she. Hello? Oh, darling, what happened? We were disconnected, dear. Oh. oh, Chris, I thought something might have happened to you. No, I'm all right, dear. I'm sorry I spoke so harshly to you before. Oh. You know I don't mind, Chris. It's your nerves. You work too hard. Yes. You know, I think I need a vacation. 
What do you say if you and I go away for a few days? Oh. Go to the seashore? Try some deep sea fishing? Oh, Chris, darling, it'll be wonderful. <laughs> To continue the story, till death do us part, as it is written in the sealed book. Having made his plans with care, Chris Worby has taken his wife Blanche to the seashore for a holiday. And in a rented motorboat with fishing tackle spread about them, they are now far out from shore. Just Chris and Blanche. I think we're far enough out now. I'll shut off the motor. Ah. Looks like a good spot. Oh, Chris, it's wonderful out here on the water. And I have you all to myself here. That's what you've always wanted, isn't it, Blanche? To have me all to yourself. Yes, darling. Oh, Chris, look. There's smoke coming out of the engine hatch. The boat is on fire. Yes, you're right. Flames are shooting out of the hatch. The whole boat is catching fire. Blanche, you'd like to swim for it. Oh, the gasoline tank is liable to explode any second. But, Chris, you know I can't swim, and we're a mile from shore. I'll keep you afloat until another fishing boat comes to our rescue. I'll jump first, then you follow. But, Chris... It's our only chance. Chris, I'm frightened. Someone on shore must have heard the explosion and seen the smoke. Why don't the boats come? No boats are going to come for you, darling. Chris, what are you saying? When the boats do arrive, they're only going to find me. Chris, you wouldn't let me drown. Oh, wouldn't I? I tried to reason with you. And when that didn't work, I ran away. Oh. But you wouldn't let me alone. Well, this is the only way I'll ever be free of you. You can't do it, Chris. You can't. I love you. It's the only way I can get rid of you, so we're parting now, forever. Oh. This time, you won't follow me. I won't let you go. I won't. But you will. No. I'll break that grip. You've been a millstone no. around my neck long enough. There. Chris, don't let me drown. Save me. This is the end, do you hear? I'm free. I am free, free at last, forever. Come in. Uh, excuse me, Chris, but there's a Miss Ballon to see you. A Miss Ballon? Ann Ballon? Yes. Oh, show her in. Anne. Chris. Anne, it's wonderful seeing you again. Oh, it's been five years. Six? You left Owensville in 1938. Six years. Good deals happened in that time. Yes. Oh, I've just learned that you lost Blanche a year ago, Chris. I want you to know how sorry I am. Oh, thank you, Anne. But tell me, how's everyone in Owensville? Well, you might have paid us a visit. 
Owensville is still only a hundred miles away. Well, I've always meant to return for a visit, but after the way I broke our engagement and married Blanche, I was afraid you'd oh, feel... Oh, Chris, you mustn't feel that way. I got over that long ago. Well, how long are you in town for? I'll have you know I am now a resident of this fair metropolis, as of yesterday. I have a job here. Oh, yeah, and it's wonderful. You may not know it, but you're going to see a good deal of me. In fact, don't be surprised if I propose to you again. Mighty soon. <laughs> oh, Chris, it's the most beautiful house a new bride ever had. Well, if you'll carry me across the threshold, Mrs. Worthy, you can see what it looks like inside. <laughs> I should be delighted to. Hey! <laughs> It's a lovely present. But you shouldn't spend all that money. What are you talking about? We were married one week today. Oh, Chris. I'm so glad we found each other again at last. We're going to be so happy together. Chris. Why, Chris Worthy. Why, Sidney Rand. I thought I recognized you. How are you, Chris? Why, I haven't seen you since you left Owensville. Good to see you, Sidney. How are the folks back home? Oh, fine, just fine. I suppose you heard about Ann Ballon. What can you tell me about Ann Ballon that I don't already know? Well, I guess this will come as a shock to you, Chris, seeing you were engaged to her once. Ann died last month. What did you say? Ann Ballon died a month ago. Why, that's impossible, Sidney. You're wrong. Chris, I wouldn't joke about a thing like that. I was at the funeral myself with Sam Morris. But that couldn't be. Oh, it all happened so sudden. They never did find out what it was she died from. It certainly was a shock. Ann was so young and beautiful. Now she's dead. It couldn't be. It couldn't be. Chris, what's the matter with you? Chris, why are you so... Dead a month. But Anne came to New York just a month ago. And she married me. She's alive, beautiful, everything I've ever wanted. Oh, Sidney's wrong. They buried someone else, another Anne Ballon. Yes, that must be it. Anne's home, waiting for me, waiting for me. <laughs> Anne, where are you? Anne! Anne, answer me, Anne! I was at the funeral myself with Sam Morris. Sam Morris, yes. Operator, I want to put in a long-distance call to Owensville, Pennsylvania. I'd like to speak to Sam Morris. I don't know his number, but... <laughs> Sam? Sam Morris? Yeah, speaking. Uh, who's this? Chris Werby. You remember me, Sam. I used to live right next Why, door... Of course I remember you, Chris. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Sam, I, I, I want to ask you something. Sure, what is it? How, how's Ann Ballon? Ann Ballon? Yes. Well, didn't you hear, Chris? She's been dead for over a month. Are you sure? Am I sure? I was at her funeral. But... But, Sam, couldn't they have buried someone else by mistake? Well, hardly, Chris. I saw her in the coffin just before they laid her way in the family plot. Chris! Chris! Are you there? Oh, it couldn't be, and they laid her way. It couldn't be. There's someone else lying in the balance plot. Must be someone else. Must be. I'll drive out there now. I'll find out who it is. <laughs>
And now to continue the story, Till Death Do Us Part, as it is written in the sealed book. After driving frantically for hours, Chris has reached Owensville, his hometown. And on the outskirts of town, at the entrance to the ancient cemetery, he is arguing with the old caretaker, who has come to the door in nightshirt and trousers. But I tell you, I have to know tonight. Can't you understand? I only want to know if a girl by the name of Ann Ballin is buried here. Look, mister, it's almost midnight. I can't go looking through any records now. You, you, you'll have to come back in the morning. Please. I'll give you $20 if you look it up for me uh, now. Uh, $20? <clears throat> All right, come in. Thank you. Uh, what did you say that name was? Ann Ballin. Uh, let's see... B, B, yeah, here we are, B, and Ballin, yeah, 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 she, she's here, buried in the Ballin family plot, interred June 26, no. section 15, plot 5. Can't be, can't be. Yeah, what'd you say? I must see that grave opened. Uh, you don't have to get a court order for that, mister. I want to see it now, tonight. I'll give you $500 to open that grave. You must be crazy, mister. It's against the law. Listen, I don't want the body. I merely want to look at it. Would $1,000 make it worth the risk? Uh, $1,000? Yes, $1,000. You'll never make an easier $1,000. We'll be finished by dawn. Well, well. Uh, $1,000, huh? <clears throat> All right, I'll do it. <laughs> I should reach the coffin. Blast that moon. Anybody comes past this graveyard, they can see us. You don't have to worry about anyone being around at three in the morning. Keep digging. We shouldn't be disturbing the dead. Rest in peace. That's what the minister always says. There, I've reached it. The coffin. Quick, quick, help me clear all the... Clear all this earth off it, so I can open the lid. All right. Anything to get this over with. Hurry. Hurry up. There. There, that's enough. All right, now hold up the lantern. I'll open it. All right. There you are. Now go ahead. There. It's unlocked. Bill, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and open it. All right. Stand back a bit. It's... It's empty. Yes, empty. Empty. I knew she couldn't be buried here. She's alive, do you hear? Anne's alive! (laughs) Anne! Anne, where are you? Here I am, Chris. Oh, Anne... It's good to feel you in my arms. Oh, why, Chris, you act as though you never expected to see me again. Well, there was a moment when I thought I wouldn't. You remember Sidney Rand, don't you? Sidney Rand? Well, yes, of course. Well, last evening as I was coming out of my office building, I bumped into her. And she started telling me all the news of Owensville. And then she told me that you'd been dead a month. That I'd been dead a month? Yes. But when I got home, you weren't here. Well, darling, it was only my running out of gas that kept me from being home when you arrived. Well, I should have known it was something like that. But I got panicky. Called Sam Morris long distance, and he too said you were dead. Must have gone haywire after that. For I took the first train to Owensville. Chris, you didn't. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Went to the cemetery where your family's buried. And there I found your grave. Yours. Mine? Yes, the tombstone had your name on it. Anne Ballin. What did you do then? I paid the caretaker to help me dig up the coffin. And when we opened it, we found it empty. <laughs> Anne, what is it? Well, why are you laughing like that? Anne! Chris, Anne Ballin is dead. Anne, you don't know what you're saying. You're Anne Ballin. No, Chris, I'm not. Look deeply into my eyes, darling. Don't you recognize me? 
recognize you. Yes. Don't you know who I am, darling? Do you remember that day at sea? I told you I'd never leave you, remember? No, it can't be. You're Anne, you're Anne. Close your eyes, Chris. Just listen to my voice. Don't you recognize me, darling? Blanche. Yes, Blanche. Blanche and Anne's body, because mine was lost at sea. No, it can't be, it can't be. But it is, Chris. I couldn't come back in my own body, so I killed Anne to get this one. You killed Anne? Yes, Chris, and then took her body. I did it so that you and I could be together again. No. Forever, darling. Together? Forever? Yes, forever. No. Oh, no, I'll never leave you, darling. Never, never, never. And that is the tale of Chris and Blanche Werby, Till Death Do Us Part, as it is written in the sealed book. When Chris was sure that Blanche had indeed returned to him, even from the grave, he tried to escape by seeking death himself, throwing himself into the sea from an ocean liner. Weeks later, his body was cast up on the shore, tightly clasped in the dead arms of the body of a woman, later identified as Blanche. So they are buried now, side by side, together forever. And now, keeper of the book, before you close the great volume, show us the tale we tell next time. This one. Yes. The amazing story of a man who stole millions and then found he had to steal himself a new face so he could protect those millions. But who discovered that his new face brought with it murder and sudden death. A tale titled, The Man with the Stolen Face. Be sure to be with us again next time, when the sound of the great gong heralds another strange and exciting tale from... The Seal Book. The Sealed Book, written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor. <laughs>